Good morning to you and welcome to a rather warm Limpopo. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, here lies a significant piece of our history, South Africa. Here we can find Me Magwena Matlala. She was a leader who took over when her husband, the chief of this area, passed away. She was not only royalty, but she was also a thorn in the flesh of the apartheid regime, having fought fiercely and valiantly against the the Draconian Betterment Act, which sought to significantly limit the economic activity of black South Africans by making sure that they have a small amount of livestock and an even smaller uh, amount of land to which they could use or cultivate. So she stood up against the system and as a result, she was the first woman to be banished, first to Hammanskrau, then to Pretoria. But when the government saw that her strength was not waning and her influence grew even more, they then banished her to King William's town. She was allowed to eventually return and only as an older woman who then died shortly after that. Today, the Department of Arts and Culture, as, law, as well as the South African Heritage Resource Agency, will be unveiling a tombstone in her honor and also a monument to really celebrate this woman who I think is quite fitting uh, as a climax or an end of Women's Month and a look forward or a throw forward to Heritage Month. I'm now joined by the CEO of South Africa. African Heritage Resources Agency, Veliswa Paduza. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, Enda, and thank you for having us. Talk to me about the process of unearthing this history that we have in South Africa. The consultation process, I, be I believe, began last year sometime, June, July. What did it entail? It's a rich history indeed, and uh, as you alluded to, we started last year already. What we did was to consult the royal family first, and we came here to the Makoni uh, royal uh, family, and we engaged with them, we put our idea across, and they welcomed the idea that we wanted to honour this magnificent woman. And thereafter, we went to the local uh, municipality of Akhanang and the district municipality of Capricorn, and we engaged there as well to say that we want to bring this and history alive in, 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 in South Africa. But also what was fulfilling was the reception that we received. The communities embraced what we wanted to bring here. And even as, as recent as yesterday, one of the community members was saying, I did not know about this history. So which means that we have a role to, to empower our communities and let them know the histories and tell the stories that took place for us to be where we are today. So there's a tombstone that's been erected here, but there's also a monument that will be open to the public, I believe. The graveyard is a national heritage site, but ordinary South Africans who too perhaps didn't know about this remarkable woman, they'll be allowed access to go and see the monument, I believe. Yes, what we decided was with, with the consultation, of course, with the royal family, that the tombstone will live it here. This place, we, uh, communities can't just access because it's a royal house. However, for the communities to be able to learn more about the history and the appreciate and celebrate me, Matlala, we then agreed with the Bakoni uh, local uh, authority that we go and erect the memorial at the council centre so that where people go in day in, day out, so that they are able to also celebrate and experience the, this, this magnificent heritage that we're talking about. Mm. This is one of many such monuments that you have built and will continue to build. I believe this one uh, ticked two boxes at least in the criteria and that she was royalty, but she was also a significant player in the anti-apartheid struggle. Talk to me about the criteria of, of, of what it takes for, for one to be honoured as an icon in this fashion uh, and also which other projects you're working towards okay and then what we what we celebrating is the cultural heritage history so where there has been a contribution towards our liberation towards the rich cultural heritage of the country we are enjoined by our act to celebrate and commemorate those heroes and heroines that led us to where we are today we have been to Tanzania, for instance, outside of the country. We have erected a memorial in honor of the cadres that fell there. We are also going to Mozambique. We've got a memorial that we are erecting there in honor of the 21 cadres that fell during the Matola raid. We are also going to France, to Delvillewood. There was a memorial that was erected in the 1980s in, in Delvillewood. And as you may be aware, next year is the centenary of the World War I. So what we are doing, we are in France, we are transforming 
bring the Delvin Wood Memorial to reflect the current histories of South Africa and honor those soldiers, especially the black soldiers, that were not recognized at the time as soldiers. We want to honor them and, 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 and say South Africa, celebrate the contribution of the South African Native Labour Corps in the World War I, especially in the Battle of Delvin Wood. To those who are saying these are not bread and butter issues, why spend money on this? Perhaps you can talk to us about how much money is being spent and the importance of utilizing those resources in this way. Culture, Ayanda, is priceless. We have to have these sorts of memorials and monuments retained and standing the test of time for us to enjoy them today and for the generations to come. So by the time all of us are no more. Those that are left behind us must know what happened, where, the, where we come from, where, where, what led us to be where we are today. And also so that they can take the bait on and carry forward celebrating our histories, celebrating our heritages and telling all the stories. As you know, we, our storytelling is skewed from where we come from but now it's our responsibility to make sure that South African stories are told and reflect all the cultures that we have here. We will unfortunately have to leave it there. I cannot probe any further due to time constraints. So thank you so much, Velisa Paduza, the CEO of the South African Heritage Resources Agency. And that's all from me at least for now more in just a moment.